So this is my top five free plugins for After Effects. Uh, plugins that I found to be quite well hidden gems. Plugins that might not have been mentioned that often, but it's just as cool as a big and well-known plugins. Number one, the True Comp Duplicator. It is available at aascripts.com as a uh, name your own price plugin. So, well, it's not exactly free, but it can be if you want it to be. Uh, the basic settings will of the box give you a unique copy of the whole structure of the comp uh, you want to duplicate. Here you will see that it is actually just copied a, a new structure with the exact same names all the way through. Uh, and that could work. But in most cases, you will want to do one or two things depending on the complexity of your project. You will either give it a prefix or a suffix to keep track of what is what, and even better often, you can make a total replace of the name. Uh, I usually go and choose a uh, rename of the comp uh, I want to duplicate, make a copy of that name uh, by pressing Command C or Control C, paste it into uh, the original name. Um, uh, area of the uh, true uh, comp duplicator, write what I want to replace it with, and oftentimes I will also create a group for it and duplicate. And here you go, a new uniquely named group that has the structure from the previous duplicated comp, but still is totally new and unique. Number two, Utility Box. Utility Box is available at Gumroad for free. Uh, as all the other uh, uh, plugins, the link will be in the description. Other tools like Motion 4 from MoGraph or Mobile 2 does the same thing uh, very well, uh, plus, plus a lot of other stuff. They are amazing must-have plugins, but they are not free, so I will not go into detail about those items. And then there is Rifts, who is available at a uh, name your own price uh, at aascripts.com, but just look at it. Man, I wouldn't know where to start. Don't get me wrong, Rift is an amazing tool because, well, you have all those options. But in most cases, I find what I need is just the ability to push the layers forward or backward exponentially. And that is so simple in Utility Box. You pick your layers, you write the amount you want to push it forward. If you pick the bottom layer first, it will start with the bottom layer. If you pick the top layer first, it will start with the top layer. And you can also go the other way or reverse it by writing the same value with a negative value. Uh, Utility Box also has other options available where you can offset your stuff exponentially. Uh, for instance, uh, transform. Here I have several layers that I want to push into the x-axis, uh, keeping the same distance between them. Utility Box also has other stuff uh, like clone. There's also Camera Rig, which is basically just a Camera Rig tool where controls over rotation can be a vital thing. And there is other funky and funny stuff like this little gear wheel thing where you can create spikes or needles as they call it. And it will create a needles group in your shape layer and you can animate it in different ways. You can also split a layer into pieces as well. But let me just show you uh, this last funky little thing where you can mess around with shapes in a cool way. I will start off by drawing a path uh, making sure it is a stroke and I click the generate random shapes button here in utility box and I write the shape group name uh, after I have defined some values and voila you have kind of a cool looking hot pattern and we can animate that and that brings me to the third tool number three trim pack trim pack is also available at gumroad for free and it is a great little tool that will give the option to animate path strokes with just one click and it works right out of the bat the tracking part is kind of interesting so if you click that it will generate a null uh, that is based on either the in or the end point of the trim animation. And that can generate some inter interesting effects uh, if we, for instance, parent an object to the generated uh, node. Number four, keys. This developer is giving away this easing tool for free at the moment. 
you just have to write to him and ask for it and he will provide it. I wrote to him and he responded in no time and I received the license without any problems and it works like a charm. Thank you. Now, again, there's a lot of easing tools out there where I think the most common and well known is Flow. And I like Flow. I do. I, I really do. I mean, I bought it and I use it. So, well, that should be proven up. But, <laughs> sorry, but I just like keys a little bit off. And here's why. Firstly, and it's it's a small thing, but it, it seems like keys is a bit more precise and a bit more built on the speed graph. And I just like the speed graph better, especially when it comes to complex animations. So what do I mean with precision? And I'm sorry, I, I, I just couldn't think of a better word. Uh, let me just demonstrate. Uh, here I have a simple X axis animation. And let me just use flow to make the easing. Nothing to it. Uh, I can make tweaks and apply them easily uh, with those big friendly handles. That's a great thing about flow, those big, nice handles. And if I'm not satisfied at all and want to start over with my easing, I can push on the linear and reset. And it is reset, almost. You can see we are not back to the original diamond shaped keyframes. And why is that? Well, if we go into the value graph, we can see that everything seems normal, but in the speed graph, we can see it is not 100% reset. There is a small curvization at the top of the speed graph. And frankly for me, that is just a little bit annoying. But, and here's the point, if we go into keys, and do the exact same thing. Push the reset to linear button, voila, we are back to square, or rather, back to diamonds. Secondly, and that is by far the most important point is, and don't tell anyone what I'm about to tell you now, but I actually like the standard easing uh, that comes along with the most easing tools. I like just pushing a standard uh, start ease and work from there. And here, Keys comes with a ton of advanced easings. And what is great about this tool and their built-in easing is that it is keyframes right out of the bat. No expressions, no scripts uh, you need to bake, no mysterious output with red marked uh, values. It is just keyframes. Keyframes you can go directly into and also like you want. Oh man, have I been searching for that. Beautiful, beautiful work by the developer. Again, thank you. And a short note uh, here, I would definitely recommend you to go and watch the developer's own tutorials. It is insane what is built into this easing tool. I've just scraped the surface of all the uh, possibilities and options. Number five, Saber. That tool is amazing. Of course, <laughs> for making lightsabers, as you can see here. But there is so, so, so much more to do. Let me just uh, demonstrate quickly. You start off by building a solid, and you apply the saber effect to it, and boom, here you have a lightsaber. Uh, it, now it's in blue, uh, but of course, you can tweak the colors, you can tweak length, you can tweak the starting point and ending point, and so on. And you can apply some crazy preset effects. Uh, or you can create your own. I'm not going to that now, but you can. But one thing that is also really powerful is that you can apply the effect to another shape or text layer. In this case, I have a saber text layer. I can uh, then go into my saber effects layer and choose to customize the core and choose the uh, text layer to create the shape of the outline and voila. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and maybe there was one or two plugins you haven't heard about or uh, forgotten existed and can put it into uh, good use in the future. Please comment, ask questions, you're more than welcome. Have an all-time great day. See you.